So friends, in this gospel that Jesus gives us today, he's laying out the conditions for discipleship which are high and intense. But I don't think these even come close to, I think, the hardest thing that he, sa- the hardest thing that he says about what it means to be his disciple. That, I think, is reserved for when he says, my disciples are the ones who will love their enemies. Who will love their enemies. Hold that in your mind. And I, I think it's connected to what St. Paul here says to the, to the Romans. St. Paul, who's picking up on the teaching of the apostles, which came, came from Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus teaching about love being the fulfillment of the law. Right? Paul says in this section to Romans, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. And I don't know how you felt last night and waking up this morning, but man, this is a jagged pill to swallow this morning. I'm probably in the same emotional space as probably many of you, just very heartbroken over the results of the election. Heartbroken over how so many mothers and so many children and so many babies will be preyed upon for financial gains from the big abortion industry through Planned Parenthood and their like. And how so many children, very confused children, adolescents, teenagers, especially young girls, in their confusion about their identity, they'll be used by the pharmaceutical companies to turn a massive profit in their gender clinics. I'm really heartbroken and mad about this. I'm mad. And I feel deflated and I feel defeated. It's just so sad that we that we live to see the overturning of Roe versus Wade, something that so many of us thought, like, that's just, that's probably never going to happen, right? Roe versus Wade is overturned, a massive step forward. And then we take this massive step back here in Ohio. Ohio, which is in many ways the bellwether of the nation, the heart of the nation. Ohio now enshrines in the state constitution abortion laws that go so far beyond Roe versus Wade. And if, like, the other states that have done similar things are, like, if if they're the proving ground, we are far from the bottom of this pit. And I think about all those vote yes on issue one signs that were in the yards of, quite literally, our neighbors. Vote yes on issue one. And I want to be mad at those people, and I want to blame them, and I want to dismiss them, but we can't. I I can't, because we're commanded to love. We're commanded to love our neighbors and to love our enemies, to hate evil, but to love our neighbors and to love our enemies. How? What is that going to look like? It's going to look like how Jesus loved us, right? Jesus says, love one another as I loved you. What did his love look like? He comes into the world, his heart fully open, wanting to give, wanting to bless, wanting to proclaim the truth and set captives free, give sight to the blind, heal the crippled, raise the dead. He wanted to just be blessing. And his love comes into the world and it is rejected from the start spurned upon from the start, spit upon from the start, mocked, crucified. There was a, a willingness in his love, there was a forbearance in his love for us, a willingness to suffer our rage, our hatred, our rebellion. There was a long suffering to his kind of love for us. He was willing to be spit in the face, because he knows how deeply messed up our minds were, our minds are. This spiritual Stockholm Syndrome that we've all experienced because of original sin, where the, the ones who've been taken captive fall in love with our condition of captivity. We fall in love with our captor. We become sympathetic to the one who is our tyrant. And so when the rescuer comes in, we see him as a threat. And we put him on a cross. 
But that's what he was willing to do. And the question for us, the question for Christians, the question for disciples is, will we love our neighbors, our Ohio neighbors, our Wadsworth neighbors, our vote yes on issue one neighbors who wanted this? Will we love them by fighting for their hearts still, by fighting for their minds, by fighting for their souls, by not writing them off, but by continuing to intercede and make sacrifices for them? Like, there's a... There's a part of my heart that probably needs to go to confession. There's a part of my heart that just wants to say, fine, you want to be lost sheep? Fine. Be lost. But that's not Jesus. That's not Jesus. Because he didn't do that with me when I was lost. We'll love them, our neighbors, by being willing to take the venom that comes spewing out of their wounds because no one, no one who voted yes for this did so with a heart that was perfectly healed or integrated. Deeply wounded people. So this is a hard day to be sure. But the call remains the same. It's the exact same. It's the same yesterday, it's the same today, it's going to be the same tomorrow. To love, to receive love deeply, to give love deeply, to love the ones who wanted this constitutional amendment. That's the call. That's the cross. Amen.